Hi, I'm Alistair and this is my video diary documenting my attempts to create an escape room in a box. Now, one of the first design decisions I made about this game was that I wanted it to be modular. So the idea is that inside the box there are a number of different sub-puzzles which are kind of nearly standalone. Um, so here I've got a connect the wires puzzle, a switches puzzle and a keypad puzzle which are all common escape room puzzle types which I've described on this channel before. And the box might contain a different configuration of modules. You should be able to switch in and out different ones to be able to make it uh, replayable and adjustable with the minimum amount of configuration changes. The idea is that the central controller here, which has got an ESP running it, when it starts up will detect what modules have been installed, uh, query them to get any particular configuration requirements they have, and adjust the game accordingly and dynamically. Uh, that's the idea. And uh, I've been making pretty good progress on that front since my last video. Um, so if I show you what happens now when I start it up, so I'm just going to connect uh, power to the device, and you'll see everything comes online and lights up. The SP starts up and I want you to take note of the LEDs on each of the puzzle controllers here. You'll see they all get lit in turn. What's happening there is that the controller here is looping through all of the possible devices on the network and attempting to ping each one to see uh, what modules have been connected. They reply with the data to say, uh, yes, there's someone listening on this uh, device ID. I'm a keypad puzzle. Here I am. Hello. Uh, I'm a switches puzzle, I'm a whatever. And uh, the, the ESP, the master controller here, is able to gather all that data and then it can use that to configure the game flow. Um, so I'll show you that again because uh, on the LCD screen here I'm actually getting a little readout but you probably can't see it from there. Uh, so if I just move the camera a bit closer. I'll tell you what, let me take it off its stand. There we go. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, disconnect the power. Actually, I'll just press the reset button again. So you'll see here the, the display will go blank. It just says setting pins. Detecting modules and we'll get the three lights flash across, hopefully. And then on the display here you can see we've got uh, module 7 is a keypad, module 8 is switches and module 9 is wired, uh, wires. And there have been three modules detected. So to show you the code I've written to do this, um, first of all, if you have a look at the left hand side of the screen here, this is the code I've got running on the ESP32, the kind of the main controller. And you can see what's happened is so as I've added uh, more and more features to this, I've kind of added more code and then I've commented bits out that didn't work or that I decided not to use. So it's getting a bit unwieldy now. Uh, I will tidy that up. Um, and you can actually see some of the the other new features I've been playing around with, if you watch my last video on this channel, you'll see that I was using an ESP8266 um, watch, a smart watch that has wireless capability, and I used the watch as a way to um, activate and deactivate the um, uh, the box. Um, so to do that, you can see I've added some references to Wi-Fi and a web server here as well. So that was kind of one feature I added and played around with. Um, but the particular feature that we're looking at here in terms of the um, the configurable and ad hoc uh, kind of network. Um, so in the setup function here uh, you'll see as I go a bit further down. So first of all I start the the PJON network up just as I was doing before but then I call this function here called identify modules. Uh, and if I show you what that is doing, I think I passed that here. So here we go, identify modules. So the um, first thing I do is actually just clear out any previous cached information I had about the number of modules that were connected or what they were, things like that. And then you'll see I've written a, a note to myself here. So uh, PJON has this uh, function, the ability to broadcast to all devices on the network. And you do that by sending a message to device ID 0 zero is like a special reserved ID that basically means send to every device and I thought oh fantastic what I'm going to do is when I first start the code up what I'm going to do is get the master device to broadcast a message uh, to everything 
and get them to reply back and say basically who heard the message and um, and i did try that and it was really it's a really effective way of sending a command to all the devices so let's say you want to bring them all online or disable them or um you know just like a one-way command but what i want to do here is i i want a two-way communication i want to send them a, a query to say okay what modules are there out there who is listening to this and then i want them to reply and what i found is if i use the broadcast function the controller sent that out and then all of the modules tried to reply back at once it goes i'm here i'm here you know this is me and that just made the the network far too congested so um then i kind of i thought well okay let's go for a slightly more uh you know simple approach instead what i'll do is set up a loop and simply loop each possible device id in turn try to ping uh, or send a packet of data to that device and just see which ones respond uh, so that's the approach i'm actually doing now so i'm starting at eyes uh, one i'm not starting at zero because remember zero is this special um, value reserved for broadcasting to all devices so i'll start at one and i'll count up to the maximum possible modules that i've uh, assigned device ids to um, so that can be as high as 254 but that would need a very big box to fit all those modules in so um i think uh, i think the volume i've got at the moment is 32 but to be honest even that's probably far too high um and i will simply loop over all those numbers and i will try to send a packet of data to the device with that id so just a single packet and then i'll wait 250 milliseconds and then i'll try the next device id so it's a little bit like one of one of those auto um, telephone caller devices that just goes through you know every possible phone number and just see who answers that's basically what i'm doing but um with with devices instead kind of thing um and you'll see what i'm sending them is uh this thing here that says ping so to understand what that does we need to look at the right hand side of the screen and this is uh one of the example puzzle controller modules so this one is the uh, the connect the wires puzzle and um when i first started sort of adding the functionality for this what i did was i started to add in uh, lines of code into the setup and the loop function and things like that and and it got quite like the the main function here it got very busy very noisy very quickly but uh, then what i decided to do instead is to create a external library and move of the generic functionality out into the library now this is not something i've really talked about uh much before normally when i make a project i create a single kind of fairly monolithic arduino sketch that contains all the functionality that i've written inside that one sketch and that's generally fine arduino projects are normally quite small um you don't have a need for like lots of complex uh, sub libraries and, and separate structures and things like that if you're programming for a slightly more complicated device like a um, you know a pc or a console you can't keep all your code in one file it would just get unmanageable so you tend to sort of split it out into lots of sections but when you're targeting very small microprocessors it's actually more efficient sometimes to have them in one device but what i've got here is i've got a slightly different reason for wanting to separate out that code because i've got a number of separate arduino sketches each puzzle controller has got its own individual functionality so all this uh stuff here this is all stuff that is only specific to a connect the wires puzzle but i also want every puzzle to um have some certain generic functionality in terms of how they interface with the main controller this idea of the modular network the ability to swap things in and out only works if there is some kind of common interface that all of the modules use so you know they can all be enabled or disabled or solved they've got a certain number of known states for example and they all respond to uh, certain common commands as well so what i've done is i've moved all that uh, generic interface functionality out into a separate library called base module and then i include that in each of the specific puzzle controller modules so um to show you what's in that library let's open up my notepad so um 
if you've not written a um, if you've not written a library for Arduino before, it's really not that much different from um, writing a um, an Arduino sketch. Sorry, I'm just trying to find the right code there. Um, the difference is it it, uh, it comes in two files. So you have a, a header file with the .h, and you have the main body file .cpp. So the header file basically is the template for your code. This describes what functions your code is going to have. Um, it doesn't actually have them. It just says this is what it's going to do kind of thing. Um, so in all of my base modules in all of my separate puzzle controllers I want to have them join the, the PGON network so I'm going to include the library for that they're going to use some Arduino functionality so I'll include the general Arduino library and I'm also going to have at least one NeoPixel style LED on every puzzle controller because that's going to be the status indicator so I'm going to include the fast LED library in every single puzzle controller as well and then I'm going to define um, all of the commands which I'm going to send over the network. So um, remember in the uh, in the master controller here, when I was trying to identify what devices were on the network, uh, I sent this message here called ping. So ping you can see is defined as a single character. So that actually corresponds to the character P. You'll see that every command I've defined is actually a single character. So this means that I only have to transfer that one character over the network and every module will interpret it to have the same meaning. And I've defined like a, a handful of um, different possible messages which I might want to send here. So I might want to reset the device. I might want to report back to the controller that the device has been uh, solved or failure or you know I might want to query it and find out what it's called so um, I can extend um, or modify these things here and because it is in this header file which is being incorporated by all of my devices I don't have to go into each individual uh, one separately and tell them there's a new message type there because they're all importing from the same uh, header file so that's that's the advantage of this kind of technique um, I've defined a struct here this is uh, I've just called this config um, so the idea here this was when that device first comes online and what I you know what I was just talking about showing you that the, con the main controller pings them and they re respond back with this information this little set of information to say yep I'm here I'm a connect the wires puzzle my current state is enabled and I've had three attempts made to solve me or wh whatever it might be uh, so I've defined a, a simple struct. Currently, it only has uh, a couple of fields in it, but I might extend that as well as we get on there. And then in this section here, this is where we actually define the functions that we're going to have available in this library. Um, so we've got some constructors, some states, and then this is um, uh, so these. Where is at the top here? We had the commands that were sent over the network. Here we have the actual functions that will correspond to those commands, largely speaking. So what do we do when we first initialize one of these puzzle controller modules? What are the steps that need to happen? What need to happen on every iteration through loop? What do we do when it gets reset or solved and all those things as well? Um, but so this is the header file. This, like I say, this doesn't actually contain the functions itself. It just says what it's going to do. And then we also have an associated uh, C++ file so this is where it actually defines the uh, the functions and you see this is a little bit scrap as well I've been trying out things and, and uh, kind of commenting that as well uh, so for example in the loop function here what happens in the loop well we want to display the LED depending on the state of the device at the moment so if the current state is disabled it's going to be off if it's enabled we'll make it glow red and if it's sold we'll make it green and the point is now I don't have to write that code in every one of my puzzle controllers what I do is in, in the individual puzzle, uh, puzzle controllers I just call um, module.loop and that will include this in, in every individual one and they'll all behave exactly the same that's my point so if I decide actually uh, when the puzzle is solved, I want to make that uh, LED glow blue instead of 
screen for example I just change it once here and all of my controllers will be updated uh, I need to make sure I actually check the bus to see if I think any messages have been received and update the fast LED as well uh, but the most important one probably actually is this function at the top here so this is the um, receiver callback function and what this does is this actually describes how the module is going to behave when it receives different messages over the network so you'll see we've got enable disabled reset pin these correspond again to all of these messages here and then in this half you'll see we've got enable disable reset well these corresponded to the different functions we defined at the bottom so this function here this is basically describing how the messages that are received over the network correspond to the functions that are actually called it it, uh, it provides the sort of the mapping between them and this one is the one that we're interested in because this is the one that gets called when the system first starts up so move this across again remember what happens is that the master controller loops over every uh, device ID in the range between one and the maximum number of modules and it sends a single command which is ping and then on this side what happens is we've got our puzzle controller that's calling our module um, and when that receives this ping command this is what happens here so if the first character is the payload and I'm only ever sending a single byte character remember so that's the only thing I need to look at if that's equal to ping then what do we do well we create one of those little uh, config modules so that uh, struct that was defined here and uh, we populate it so we say the name of uh, this particular module so is this a connect the wires module or is this a um, you know a keypad module whatever it is um, and what is the current status of this module as well and then we send it back so this reply here we will send this information back to the master controller that requested it and we'll pass in that struct um, you see I've called a, a, a delay here as well that's actually probably not necessary anymore I put that in to start with uh, to again like I said to try to reduce this chance of collision so so that not all of the puzzle controllers were all trying to reply at the same time and shout I'm a you know keypad switch connect whatever puzzle and they'd all um, you know be shouting over each other but now that I'm actually only contacting them one at a time I probably don't need to include that delay in here as well I'm sort of delaying at both ends and then I've also got this uh, line here so this sets the LED to um, a nearly white value as it sends that reply and that was what you saw in the video demonstration at the beginning when you saw each one just flash um, quickly on and off that was to show that it was replying to that ping message that was received from the controller and the idea then is back on the, the main controller um, what we're going to do is we're going to gather uh, each of these packets each of these config things that was sent back uh, we're going to store them in an array so we actually know what devices are plugged in for this particular game and based on that we can adjust the game flow accordingly um, so yeah that's um, that's where we're up to